you know the journey of self discovery or you can say mindfulness or meditation starts from where we are but where we are where we are in the world in our relations where we are at the physical level mental level emotional level so you might have heard you know we teachers you know when we are not aware that everyone can start the journey where we are so we teacher starts saying oh you have to prepare for asana no no you have to calm down then you have to meditate we only need an awareness and recognition so how to understand some of the teachings of our masters one thing is sure <clears throat> with all of us uh, you include me also and you should that when we start the journey in the mind in the emotions in the intellect we have a feeling that can i get into that permanent peace and happiness every teacher is talking about and now that statement is expressed by buddha as dukham 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 means sorrow 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 so if you start contemplating in your life i am uh, guiding one couple here and both said to me that you know we love 99% each other everything is okay i said then why i am there with you oh only 1% is the problem but that 1% is the 100% problem so why don't you manage with the 99% of love only 1% is the problem so that is what buddha says dukham 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 that 1% pervades and permeates the entire life only a recognition is required and then the buddha says anityam 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 so first step is recognition awareness where i am you know i may be healthy i have no problem with my my relations no problem with the world you know i'm doing good you know we can say financially uh professionally socially so i have to become aware what exactly i am looking for that should be very clear in our head what i am seeking and why i am seeking we start dreaming let us sit close our eyes as some people say me that i will i want to levitate we are already levitating in our life what is the need to dream about it so what buddha has been referring first that there is a suffering do i recognize 
do I recognize that there is a suffering? My master used to say that, uh, do you experience pleasure? It gives you some kind of a happiness? Yes. And there comes the time when this pleasure disappears from your life. Yes, the mind starts craving for it. It has created a habit and it falsely acknowledges that pleasure is nothing but happiness. So my master used to say that because we do not recognize and acknowledge that the pleasure comes and goes, so the pain comes and goes. This is what Buddha is saying. The world is suffering. Well, if we go a step further, so you see that Buddha says, Anityam, Anityam, Anityam. Impermanent nature of what we are seeking. Then the mind starts understanding and acknowledging that is there anything permanent? See that? We should always, the moment if you want to treat the path successfully, we should always contemplate and reflect. For example, you see, it permeates our physical, mental, emotional, professional, social level. For example, you are upset with a person with whom you have never been upset in permanent nature. Do you recognize and acknowledge and maintain your cool and calm? Mindfulness and meditation is for you to know how to remain, I won't say indifferent, but how to remain not dictated and influenced by the very mind that has accepted the permanent nature of the world. That is what Buddha is, oh, the pain comes and then we get upset. Honey, I never thought you should behave like this. Are you controller of the world? No. Enjoy. It is his or her problem. That, you know, we are understanding we have to start the journey from where we are. So from today, I will not be upset. I refuse to be miserable because of the constant nature of the world is changing of impermanent. You know, we are de-identifying in our mind. That is the role of the asana. One role of the asana is that when the body is totally steady, the mind is prevented to go outside through the body. Many masters have shown a different way, but for the same thing. So, dukkham, 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 sorrow, 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 and once we Acknowledge that the world offers me suffering in terms of pain, in terms of craving for pleasure. You know, in all the cases, the mind, emotions, and the feeling is moving outside. And the intellect is carried away. That is the reason the contemplation, reflection, listening to the talk, based on the principles of Eastern wisdom, is required. So, sorrow, sorrow, suffering, even the craving for pleasure is a sorrow. Don't you feel getting agitated? 
Don't we make a statement, you know, I never thought you should be like this. When we are changing, the others are also changing. Impermanent nature. And the third point points to the state of the mindfulness. So Buddha says, I'm saying in Sanskrit, chanikam, chanikam, chanikam. So I'll bring in the understanding of the psychology here. Charnika means momentary, momentary, momentary. Why? Why he's bringing that uh, word? Momentary, momentary. Mind is facing to the world. You have acknowledged and accepted this is the nature of the world, suffering and impermanent. You have created a gap between the response that you are going to give to the world and you. That is momentary, momentary, momentary. The psychologist says that when there is a gap, when there is a space between you and the world outside, that gap gives you to make a response, not a reaction. And that gap is known, understood, experienced in meditation. Charnikam, momentary. In a spur of moment, I become angry. In a spur of moment, I say, I love you. Do you see that? Do you have that moment? That moment is always there. We discover. So what we discover? We discover that we can still maintain the inner peace and happiness. Whatever it takes in the world outside, at the personal, professional, social level. The Buddha says, Shunyam, Shunyam, Shunyam. Emptiness, emptiness, emptiness. So the moment we discover, we are filled with the pure consciousness of peace and happiness, love and wisdom. So where we have started our journey, acknowledge and accept and recognize where I am in the world. Is the mind running outside? Okay. Body, mind intellect, ego. Sometimes, you know, we get heavily conditioned, you know. I have read that if you sit in a lotus pose, then only you will succeed in mindfulness. So I created my own conditioning. Why? Because I don't want to succeed. Not that I want to succeed. Do you see that? Oh, I go to the session when, you know, you know that, you know, I cannot do it, so let me do it. And we have hundreds of examples by masters who never started with a lotus pose, who never declared that this pose is must. Why? It is the word outside. Nothing is outside is must for self-discovery. That is how the journey of mindfulness or meditation or self-discovery begins. So let us start the practice and see 